Um, Jordan, with regards to uh, 3D, have you got any ideas that you'd be willing to talk about um, with um, with regards to AI and how that could protect how yeah. the opportunities oh, that yeah. you maybe see there? Yeah, it's something I'm definitely thinking about like a lot um, because you know things like oh, how do I turn? Is it possible for an artificial intelligence to see a 2D image and then perceive it into a 3D image in a way? Things like that um, borrow a lot of practices from full self-driving cars, like the way cars are able to take images and then turn it into a 3D image so that it knows how far a tree is or how far a, a traffic cone is. Those same kind of methods, even though they're used for self-driving cars right now, I think there is a possibility in a very near future where we'll be able to see things like, okay, scan a sketch. A few seconds later, it's an OBJ file and like a 3D, it's an actual 3D mesh, even though it was a 2D image. Things like that, I think, will be very, very, very shocking and very helpful, I think, in a way, because you'll, you'll, you're, you're, you're not having to like, I don't know, use Blender or like try to like build it really, really quick, or it'll be, give you like a new base for to build the 3D on rather than like starting blankly from 3D side, top view, um, front view, and then like building off those angles and things like that. That's one thing. Um, and then some other things such as like generative design in a 3D space as like where you're able to, let's say, draw like in Zebra. I don't know if you ever use ZBrush, but it's kind of like a sculpt, more of like a sculpting tool yeah. kind of things like that. There's been like a lot of like talks as far as like, how do we, how do we have more generative tools in that kind of space? Like being able to like, okay, I want to generate a hundred, a hundred sedans in 3D right now. And it's kind of like, just gives you a bunch of like poly meshes of like different sedans. Cause it's like scanned a bunch of different OBJ or like alias files of like what it means to be a sedan in 3D, things like that. Um, but I think in general, we're trying to apply a lot of the, our underlying fundamental of just building these tools that shorten the distance of having an idea and bring it to life and just applying it to all these different categories. So if we can find opportunities there, then yes, we are definitely exploring it. But those are just like some really quick ideas that we're like trying to think of as well. Um, uh, just out of interest, who's we? How many people are involved <clears throat> in the BizCom project? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's three of us. There's me, um, Trim. Um, I, I'm going to butcher his last name. Trim Abrahims. I'm Abrahimson. And he's from, he is actually from Norway. And he interned at places like Lego, um, graduated Strat. Um, I'm pretty sure he's working at an agency right now in France. And he's actually, we found each other through Instagram because he was working on a project similar to Viscom, where I thought fit very well with Viscom. It was a automatic rendering tool. So you can like upload a sketch and then it would just render the values for you. And that's now a part of Viscom. If you go on Viscom, the Instagram page, you'll see a demo that we built out where yeah. users can just upload a sketch and you'll get it all rendered out the gray values. I need to, sorry, then, I, did, I need to stop you there one second. I, do, yeah, I need yeah. to say that I was yeah. very pleased to see that you credited the designers. I actually spoke to Alan yeah. DeRosier today. I oh, didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, I sure. didn't, <laughs> I didn't tell him that, that I was speaking to you. I'll, I'll, I will do so tomorrow. I just, we had, so yeah. much so many other things but dude that was a really you it's so important that you do shit like that and oh, so many course. people don't understand that so it was it was a really awesome thing i know that yeah so that yeah we, we credited gregory bars as well um <clears throat> so yeah he he's been he's been very very helpful he's been helping me develop the kind of that tool necessarily it was kind of something he was uh or specifically it was something he was working on prior to viscom and then we message each other through Instagram, like, oh, look, like we're both working on like AI tools that are trying to like solve relatively the same thing. So then we came together and we actually started like building out the tools themselves and like trying to come up with like a cohesive product line. And then there's Kaylin Richards, another friend of mine from Michigan, who's been helping us with the uh, actual web development as well, like trying to actually put these tools on the web for people to actually try out themselves. Uh, he's an engineer that graduated from Michigan State University and he, we've both been just like hacking away, just like coding, trying to like figure out how do we get these tools in people's hands and things like that. And then there's also my friend, uh, Emil Lucas, who was helping me a lot with the earlier process is figuring out the actual use cases and kind of really, he's like a very user centric kind of guy and like big picture person as well. And he's someone I would just like talk to a lot, throwing ideas back and forth. but. 
as of right now, the main contributions are just like me, Trim, <clears throat> Kaylin Richards, really trying to figure out like, okay, how do we build out these tools? What's our mission statement? And hopefully one of these days, this is something we can just like all pursue like full time and like really go in on it. Um, I, yeah, I, I can't, I'm, I can't really decide if this is a question to end off with, but um, I, uh, or, or just ask you now, yeah. now is probably a good, good time. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure. thinking out loud like an idiot, but uh, <laughs> no, no, it's all good. So, so dude, this I, is very organic. Okay. One of the things that, <laughs> that I think is really, really, um, this is a really important question because sure. um, in the design space, kids and adults as well are terrified <laughs> of people stealing their ideas stealing this stealing that and all oh, the rest yeah, of it yeah, yeah, and so everybody's <laughs> like paranoid to keep everything together what i'm interested to yeah. know is like you know these guys uh um that you've met online the uh, uh trim for example what yeah. what is the conversation that you have with somebody like that with regards to like how do we without spending thousands of dollars on lawyers fees how do we mm -hmm like virtually shake hands and and make a you know a, 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 a collaborative um uh, oh, okay. cross. so, so yeah, how yeah, does yeah. that work <clears throat> as far as like developing this common things like that yeah because you've you've been working on something he's been working on something and how do you get yeah. to a point where you guys can fully just trust each other and go listen have a look at this without sure you know being sure. stifled by paranoia <laughs> yeah no i mean we I mean, trust obviously is a lot of it as well, but thankfully we live in a time where you can send documents online. Just so, you know, we just have like, uh, I just created like a DocuSign kind of thing. And then we just all like came to an agreement, like, look, this is like, these are the things that we're keeping between ourselves that are confidential. Um, Cause Viscom has its own like LLC and things like that. So it's, it's technically a company, I guess you could say. Um, so we just kind of like came to the agreements um, and we both have very similar views on where these tools belong and like their place in the creative process so it was really easy and it was really easy to kind of come to an agreement of like look like we're in this together this is like a very collaborative process this isn't like a oh i'm trying to one-up you and you're trying to one-up me kind of thing we were just like all and it's just fun like we're just all like really kind of just like genuinely having fun i feel like we didn't even really have to like have a kind of document or handshake on this because it was just something we were both genuinely kind of like passionate and curious about. But in general, yeah, there's, we just like created a quick document and like had a founder's agreement and we were like, oh, okay, yeah, this is the startup we're trying to build. And yeah, this is it. <laughs> this so guy. you guys are all like, uh, so there's how many of you? There's four of you or three of you? Uh, there's three of us. Yes. There were, and, like, and you me, guys are just Truman like, we're going to split it three ways like pirates. Yep. Yep. And then we're just, we just have the founders agreement. Yeah. We're just all founders of this. Wow. That's, that's mega. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's out the way then. Listen, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I do, we could, we could talk about this forever and it's a fascinating subject. Maybe, oh, yeah. you know, maybe, There's maybe we can, forever. I just, I, I don't want to, um, dilute this by asking you variants of the things that I've already asked you, you know, there, it's, oh, no, it's, it's fine. uh, um, <laughs> I, I just, it, it, the, the whole AI thing, as 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 you heard in uh, Carolina's episode, I I I have I don't know, yeah. I don't know anything about, and I'm only st starting to now get kind of comfortable with it. I know sure. a lot of people are still very uncomfortable with it, and I think yeah. that um I you know it's just I, it's just important to 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 understand um you know how we can use these things to our mm -hmm. advantage and 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 not be terrified of it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I completely agree, which is like, this is the one thing me and Trim are always talking about. It's like, how do we get this? How do we showcase this in a way where it's not a replacement and it's an assistant to the designer or any creative? So we, we've been exploring things, uh, my friend Emil, in like footwear, for example, and like, how do we generate designs for footwear designers, um, illustrators, concept artists? So this is something that's gonna not only live in car design, car design was just like a medium that was the easiest to test because I already had designers pen up and running. Um, but I really want to stress that this isn't something that's meant to hinder people's creativity or replace them in any way. It's kind of just like this companion kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's just like a fundamentally new process. You know, it's like, you're talking back and forth with a machine rather than like another designer. And it's kind of like, it's just a new way to like collaborate with machines rather than them telling you constant, like you're not necessarily telling the machine always what to do. It might have its own opinion sometimes in some ways, but then you can influence that just like how we do as people with each other. 
Um, uh, Jordan, do you see um, the? <laughs> It's 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 difficult for I'm trying to visualize exactly what what Viscom is and 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 let's mm -hmm. let's let's for argument say yeah. for, for, let's compare it to something like we already know an app for example okay. right so would you sure. um do you see it have you thought about um a business model for it uh, already or <clears throat> is it is it is it um you know the uh, what I've got in my head is that um yeah and just I, I, you need to correct me if I if I get this wrong. But sure, sure. what I'm um, what I've got in my head is like you 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 maybe download an app and you can yeah. tailor make your own um, uh, uh, version of um, as I said. You know, I could take my favorite designers and say like I like these style of sketches and um, yeah. I want to grow my own AI. Uh, sure. Tr or train train my own AI. Um, sure. Oh, fuck. You need to just tell me. Yeah. What, yeah. You know, no. 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 Yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. No. That okay. you're you're like on the right. This is all correct so far. Okay. Yeah. No. I I think so. From the business model standpoint, um, obviously we do want to give people later on down the line, once we do have the infrastructure built out, to give them the ability to train their own AI on like let's say certain images because a lot of the constraints here are the data itself, which is the sheer amount of data that you need to train these AIs, um, these different neural networks. So it's it would be a problem of like, how much how much burden do we wanna put on the users to go out there and do the work themselves of collecting all this data and then training it? And then, or versus us doing that part and providing them different outlets of like pre-trained models for them to pick from, like these different buckets. Okay. So th this is something we're kind of like, as we're releasing these beta tools throughout to the community and seeing how they perceive it and stuff like that, we're trying to like figure it out as we go. But, you know, off the top of my head, a business model, if you're talking like monetary wise, it would be maybe like limiting how much of the tool you can use. And then maybe you have to like pay to like unlock a certain amount. So it's like, oh, you generated over a hundred images. If you want to have unlimited generated images and stuff like that, you maybe because like, okay, like a, free a freemium, a freemium model, basically. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Freemium, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you imagine, I mean, do you, you, you imagine uh, in the beginning having access to uh, um, a neural network that you guys have trained? And later on, yes. selling a standalone, um, untrained, uh, yep. AI Model, pet I guess, yeah. that somebody can, yep. like a Tamagotchi, <laughs> basically. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, that's a perfect analogy, essentially, yes. And everyone will have their own unique AI, let's say, for example. Like some student might be like, oh, like, and then and then it becomes a game of like, who can find the best data? You know what I mean? Like, it then becomes like a different, the process itself just changes completely. Like the amount of time you're allocating to certain things will just become like different. It's like, oh, that student spent more time training his AI. Therefore, the results are like looking a little bit better than mine. And then right. who knows where that leads? <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's an interesting, that's an interesting analogy because again, it's like, you yeah. know, if you take Instagram as an example, it's like, you know, everybody's got the same tools, right? So everybody can yeah. put, everybody can put a filter on, everybody can change the contrast, everybody can do these basic yeah. things, but somebody sure. that has no visual sensibility can like, mm -hmm. you know, completely overcook the filters and just create an otherwise <laughs> exactly. like, like, you know, what would have been okay if you had just left it alone into this really right, disgusting exactly. image. So again, <laughs> it, will boil, it will boil down to, to, to taste as well and your, and, and the way that you train it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do, I mean, there's still like a level of sensitivity needed for a lot of this stuff. It's not completely automated. So that's another thing, you know, we're just trying to get across that like, there's just a new avenue of creativity that's opened up for people to explore. I, I'm, dude, this is, this is so, it's fucking, ex I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> like, I'm so yeah. excited about this shit. Like for the first time, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know, dude, like, I, like, yeah, Elon I, Musk, I, trust me, I know. <laughs> Elon Musk is a huge, um, I don't know, inspiration and, uh, I'm, oh, of I'm course. A, little oh, bit of a fanboy and i wasn't always Same. you know but i <laughs> i um but one thing that um you know put the fear of god into me and probably the rest of the world was when you know he got up on on like i don't know a few years ago and he said like you know we we need to be um we need to be very very take all of 
this very very seriously because yes. you know it can eventually evolve into a situation where we've got robots running down the street chopping people's heads off i mean it's a very very <laughs> extreme yeah, no, scenario but he's saying like you know these things need to be governed and 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 uh you know the the government needs to be involved and they need to yeah. be investing heavily into the security of these things no yeah i i think a lot of this stuff is so brand new and like you were saying there 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 is there's also this kind of like hollywood perception of ai that's like oh the robots are taking over but it it only knows what you teach it in a way it's kind of like a little baby like in its infancy so i think you know depending on the context yes you, we will have to be very careful on how we use these things and making sure it doesn't go out on its own and just <laughs> like you said like going around chopping off people's heads but i think in the context of creativity I have a very clear vision of like where it will kind of develop and how it will develop and things like that. And that's essentially just being like an assistant in, in that, in that form. Yeah. Fascinating, dude. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Listen, we don't like, uh, have forever and we haven't even touched a uh, designer's pen yet. So let's, oh, that's let's fine. maybe, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's maybe talk about that. So you, how, how old is designer's pen? Sorry. What, first of all, what is designer's pen? For those that don't know. So, um, actually, I need to... Can I grab my laptop charger really Absolutely, quick? Absolutely, yes. battery on my laptop charger. No, no, no. You <laughs> carry on. You go ahead. Okay. Uh, laptop charger. There we go. Is there a power plug over there? There it is. Okay. All right. Let me just grab this charger. Okay. Um, okay, so I don't know if you want to ask the, ask the question again. Sorry okay. about that. Okay, so w the question is, what is Designer's Pen? Yeah, so Designer's Pen is basically a community page for people to, you know, get an insight into car design and other art fields um, and a place for people to get their name out there and share their different works on this platform. So it's a, it's an, in, it's an Instagram account. It's an Instagram. Oh, yeah. So it's essentially, yeah, it's an Instagram page and also a website for inspiration. Oh, so essentially you, it was like an inspiration driver. Do you have, do you have, is there a website as well? Yeah. 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 There's designerspin.com. That's where the current VizCom tool lives. But then we like broke it. I decided to just make VizCom its own thing. Cause it was, inter it was like conflicting with what designers pen was. So there's like a website you can go on and just like grab inspiration images similar to like a Tumblr page. Okay, so how long ago did you did you start that, Jordan? Oh, so I started Designer's Pen, let's say back, I want to say like 2015. It's been a while. Yeah, like 2015 is when I first started the Instagram page. It, and that's where it started, ago. before it was a website. Yeah, it started out just like as a website at first, and then I made the Instagram like a few weeks later. It was because uh, in Detroit, there's this thing called the uh, Sketch Battle, Middle Scott Sketch Battle. You've yes. probably heard of this. Yeah, yeah. And they, I just thought this was like the like the coolest event. I was like, there's just this underground, like anyone who's not in the car design world, if they saw this, they'd be like, what is this? Like, there's like these guys sketch battling and like whoever can have the best, like, and they're all just like down there sketching and there's like people surrounding, like it's like it's a boxing match. So then I, after that, after that event happened, I went to my friend Matt Morelli's uh, apartment and I was like, dude, I have to like somehow be able to share this experience with people. And like, cause this is just something so weird. So that's when I made the website and I came up with the name designers pen because my, uh, I just thought, I don't know, like, cause designers always have a pen. <laughs> so then that's why I made the website just to showcase this event, which was the sketch battle event. Cause I had my camera and I was taking pictures and stuff. And then, yeah, that, that it started spreading around and I was like, okay, I should make like an actual Instagram page as well, because there's, there was always this, especially when I was in school, there was kind of this like fog in between CCS and Art Center. Like those were like the two schools we knew about that we knew about each other, but it was really hard for us to like see each other's work. And we only had to see the Art Center kids work when they had their graduation thing. And like people's eyes would be glued to the screen trying to see like, oh, this is the guy coming out of Art Center. Like, oh, this is what the Art Center guys are doing these days. And vice versa for us as well. It was really hard, like only through like form trends and maybe SimCom were the only ways you could like see what was happening at other schools. So then that's when I kind of decided to make the Instagram page of like, this is a way to kind of like 
democratize the whole like field and like everyone can share their stuff here. This is where we'll have all the different content and stuff like that. So what was it? Was it supposed to be in uh, in the beginning an exclusive thing for Art Center and CCS? Um, mainly students in general, like just stu- not necessarily those two schools, but in general, at first I was like, oh, this is going to be a thing for students to like share their work and like get their names out there. Cause the only way you could do it back then, I guess, was just at the school events, like the graduation events and I guess maybe cold emailing people, but it was really hard to kind of like get your name out there. There wasn't like a place to be like, I'm going to post my work here or submit my work here. And then hopefully the industry sees it. This was kind of like my way of trying to solve that problem but how did you how did you start that because i mean like how would you have differentiated Mm -hmm. yourself from any other instagram account at that stage well at that time there wasn't really any like there was only like form trends um like car design world the instagram page wasn't even there yet like it was just me and like yeah there was no car design world yet he came like months after like after like like way later there was no like Instagram and car design was pretty small like they're like people like individual designers were uploading their stuff like Art Martins maybe and like um, uh, like Gregory bars like they were on Instagram don't get yeah, me yeah. wrong but yeah. as far as like a hub kind of thing those weren't as popular now there's a bunch like you know there's like car design daily there's like uh, Eugen, um, there's like a bunch of chapter 2050, like there's like a bunch of different hubs now, but back then at this time, there wasn't really many of these things. No. Amazing. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's like uh, a timing it's, thing. it's, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you've, so you've, you've grown it to quite a, quite a big, I mean, it's, you know, it's what 70, 75 odd thousand now. Yeah. Like somewhere around there. Yeah. 75 K. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> So you started, you started what? So it's like coming up for six mm-hmm. years or five years? Yeah, almost like, yeah, six or five years. Time goes by so fast. I was like 18 or something when I started it. <laughs> so you, know, funny, oh, so like you weren't I, even <laughs> a student yet? I was a student. I was like really young though. I was like 19 or 20, like somewhere around there, maybe more so is a correct answer. I, yeah, I was really young. I was in school still when I started this. Jesus, Jordan. You are <laughs> so ahead of the curve. You know what? I, I, I don't even want to tell you what I was doing at 18. It, it explains a lot. So that's probably why. I'm, yeah. But, um, no, 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 no. dude, it's, 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 you're a very, very, very switched on guy, dude. Very, very switched on. So, um, the, the, um, has it, but it's evolved into more than that, though. It's not just student work. Yeah. So, it slowly, I started expanding it out because, you know, the car design world is relatively small. So like, there's almost like a ceiling, I would say in a way. Yes. So, and one thing I thought that most artists and creatives in general could relate to was just inspiration as a whole. So like, I started to turn it more into, especially in the story reel, stories have become kind of like the new popular medium for sharing content online. And that's when I'll just kind of post like a lot of different like images and things like that and like become like a curator in a way. And I say, and on that subject, I think like curators in general are kind of like one of the most undervalued assets of the internet. Like people that literally spend their time to just curate things and share on the web, like to the users it might come across like, oh yeah, they, of course they just found it and reposted it. But like, I feel like curation is something that's super undervalued and I, it will, it might be a profession in the future. It's like, oh, like I know Spotify hires music curators, these 16, 18 year old kids to curate playlists and things like wow. that. So to me, it's, it's, it's just, it's just like another, um, like medium to just like exercise even my own creativity. It's like, mm, how do I, what do I curate today? Or like, what do I share and stuff like that? <laughs> how often are you posting? Uh, I try to post every day. It's hard <laughs> to post every day because like sometimes I just like don't know what to post. Uh, but at least like, four to five times a week I try to post and then on my story I try to post like just images that are kind of like whoa like where did you what is that or like where is that like a weird architecture building and stuff like that but yeah like four to five times a week I would say what is your reason for being anonymous and all of this stuff yeah that's a really good question this is probably the first time that I've actually even like put my face as like, I'm designer spin. Like, like, cause even when I was in, cause at first when I was in school for obvious reasons, I wanted it to be anonymous. Cause like, 
I didn't want, I, I, as soon as I made the page, I was receiving so many DMs like, oh, can you upload my work? And then it would, it would be funny. I would go to class and someone would be like, oh, dude, I sent designers pen my sketches. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. <laughs> like, yeah, that's really, that's so really you interesting. Didn't, like, you didn't tell your friends, no. No, no, no. Cause I, I didn't really like, I personally didn't want something like this to be about me. Like it's, it's, it's kind of like Daft Punk, you know, like you, you don't know their faces and that's kind of like, that's the novel part of it. It's like, we don't know who that is. Like it, and then you can, you can focus more on the content than the actual thing itself rather than the person. Cause as soon as a person subscribes themselves to something, it then becomes like about them and the product. It's like, it's kind of like you're saying like Elon and Tesla. It's like Elon's just as much as Tesla as Tesla is just Tesla, you know, like, so like, I kind of just want, I didn't really want to like subscribe, like put my face or me to be a part of like the actual thing itself. But now it's kind of inevitable. Like people start, I guess some people, some people do know. And like, I don't know, I just <laughs> didn't really want to be the forefront, like face of the thing. <laughs> Dude, that, it, I mean, it's, it's very smart. And I think um, yeah. it's, it's really impressive um, mm. how you've grown it without yeah. kind of doing that. But I think, yeah, yeah. okay. So the, the, well, the next question then would be like, do you think you could, you could, do it again like i mean do you think it was a, mm. how 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 important was timing right right uh, it would definitely be harder because of the saturation like i feel like you know in those kind of things timing is important like i wouldn't say it's like a first come first serve um but it's definitely like timing definitely played a huge role in it because there just wasn't much competition yet I probably could do it again, but my approach would be different. <laughs> what would your approach be? Uh, look, it, would, it, it, it would, I don't, um, okay. Here's a, I, here's a, here's a question, Jordan, like, um, sure. Social media, as you know, and you've not only know, but are a practitioner of it is sure. this elusive thing. And in, and what, and what yeah. I mean by that is that like, you know, you've got, if we take the car design space, sure, it's amazing that the people that should be popular. Yeah, no, that's not that's not fair to say. I know, I know. <laughs> I okay. get what you're trying no, to no, say. No, no, no. What? Get... Okay, so here's the thing. If sure. I'm gen there's exceptions to everything, and I and by yeah. the way, I really fucking respect what you've done with designers pen. Otherwise, we wouldn't be. Sure. It's plain and simple. We wouldn't be having yeah. this conversation. <laughs> and um <laughs> i so so i what i mean by that is that like there are really well-known design directors really fucking yep. well-known design directors that have got like yeah. a few hundred followers and yep. sometimes it's by choice but yep. honestly most of the time they have no clue about what they about what they should be doing on how they should be yes. doing it then yeah. you get the uh, the flip side to the coin and there's some kid that he know, they know exactly how to execute it, but yeah. there's there's maybe substance lacking, and yeah. um, um so anyway, yeah. The bottom yes. line is it's very difficult <laughs> yeah. to get the answers as to what you should be doing because even dude, even marketing right. agencies are fucking clueless. It's I like know. like the what it, like I just hire a social media expert right now. Yeah. There are like a handful of them in the world, and Gary Vaynerchuk's oh, yeah. one of them. So and 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 clearly and clearly clearly Jordan is as well. But it's like dude, guess, you've got yeah. so much shit going on that like. You know, yeah. if you were, you could <laughs> be a full-time social media consultant, but it would be yeah. so, and yeah. it would be such a waste, yeah. of t a waste of time, basically. So, yeah. Yeah. what what would your advice be for kid for for somebody wanting to create a social media presence? Right. Honestly, I I, f I feel like being unique and organic in a way is enough. Um, or also just kind of like really making like hmm, it's hard to say I, I would say being unique and organic is probably like the most important thing because it's really easy to tell if something is ran by like a social media agency kind of like person kind of thing it's it becomes really like engineered feeling in a way like i i felt like uh let's say for example like polestar kind of did like a pretty good job i would say as far as like getting their social media presence out there with like the different challenges and kind of things like that, which was controversial at one point. But 
I feel like being even what you're doing with your podcasts, like this kind of approach is very it's unique. Like there's only one Sam and there's only one pair of you talking to these people that you're that you're meeting. Like this kind of approach of like having a unique spin or twist in area, I think is really unique. Uh, like probably the most important, like honestly. I okay. The, the, <laughs> with okay, that's then then um if okay, how do you how do you stay unique with with curation then? What if you because you sure. you're not producing any original content? If right, exactly. Yeah. So if you if you're not producing any original content, okay, right. by definition the 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 um yeah. the the curation could be could be original. But how would yeah. you if you were only curating stuff? Do you think it, that would still be possible? Right. I think I think so um, because everyone hasn't seen everything unless it's like a public release then it's like okay it's fine but um i would i would say there's still room there for you to be unique in a way maybe it's like the way that you do actually curate the things um for example there's there's some designers out there that are like that don't post their stuff online and you got to really like dig deep on like some like very like blog spot like russian like websites and stuff to even like find them and things like that send me and their I think names if you uh like oh man I can't no 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 don't name. tell everyone you could tell me probably oh, oh okay <laughs> yeah like there's people like there's really like low-key designers that was like kind of like my edge at first was like finding these super low-key designers that people don't really know about but are like absolutely fantastic and don't have instagram and they just kind of like stay low-key um i think bringing light to things that are like really dark at first is what's really kind of can stand out from like a curator standpoint definitely Oh, you mean like in what, like in a meme sense or just not, not even just like a meme sense, but it's like it's it's someone who's like this is in the car design context. But like there's people that are really good at car design that don't post their work on Instagram and just kind of like sharing it on Instagram with their permission and asking them. And then sh people will be like, oh, because people go to the same places to find images, you know, like Pinterest, Behance, all those kind of things. In the moment, there is something new. It's like automatically will get a lot of attraction because no one's really seen this person or like ever seen this kind of work or style. Sorry, I've just, my image is blown up. I mean, my DSLR is oh, fine, no. but my, yeah, no, sorry, no, it's, it's just a, probably a bit off-putting for you, but it will go, it no, should it, go back to normal in a second. <laughs> it is, it is all good. Um, Jordan, I, as, as, as someone that's, um, a lot more, um, in touch with the, with the, with the, with the, the, the kids, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you young compared to me, but like, you know, the sure. next generation coming on, do you see, yeah. um, kids wanting to, uh, abstain from, from social media? Meaning like not being on social media? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, let's, oh. let's take your, let's take your example now with like some kid that, that is like, crazy talented uh designer or sketcher or whatever the case is and he's not posting on on the internet yeah do you see yeah. that sort I, of thing at all no I, I feel like it's almost the exact opposite yeah like, that's what I instagram thought well. has be instagram has almost become like the new portfolio like i've heard of there's been stories of people that have gotten hired and gotten jobs directly from instagram oh yeah it, it's yeah it's it's kind of like the whole game has like just flipped <laughs> i i think it's it's definitely like if you're not using it it's you're one step behind for sure okay but um yeah especially in the youth like the younger kids they all i'd imagine now like every ccs freshman or sophomore has a uh instagram posting their work <laughs> okay okay yeah um out of okay i i'm gonna ask you again you you can answer this or not answer this um sure. with regards to um your account do you, yeah. you've got, again, to, to recap, it's, you've got uh, a pro, a, a, approaching 75,000 followers. Are you yeah. able to monetize that in any way yet? Or um, is it something that you're sure. not interested in doing? Um, so there is, there's definitely monetization uh, opportunities that I have taken up on. Um, I try not to, because if it, if I genuinely don't believe in like the product that I'm, that I'm like posting or like, if it conflicts with what designers pen is about, then I just kind of ignore it. But there's definitely been a few sponsor posts that I've posted where someone's like, 
um, let's say if it's like a particular product or something like that, but it's still like in a, the design sphere. If it's like, oh, it's like this really well-designed backpack or something, because I know designers have books and pencils and sketches, as long as if it aligns with my followers in a way, I'll take on a sponsor post. But for the most part, um, I'm not like doing this like constantly all the time. Or if it's like a press for like a bigger company, like, oh, we're like this hydrogen fuel cell vehicle startup and we need like publicity, then yes, like those are kind of like the monetization opportunities. Have those, do those things generally come to you rather than yeah, you? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. So how often do you do, cause do you do something like that? I mean, uh, would you say it, it's is, is it something that happens like once a month or once every half a year or? Yeah, I would say like maybe once a month. It's not something like that's constantly happening. Okay. So some, <laughs> in the end, it's something I'm just doing for fun. Like I'm not really too keen on like the business side of things when it comes to that, even though like I'm starting to these days, but to me it's, yeah, it more so comes to me. Yeah when when did that start happening and what sort of numbers were you starting to get approached by companies right uh probably around like fifty thousand. like more like sometime last year i started getting like a lot more messages of like oh we're this startup and we made this like bike uh like and then i had to like kind of come up with like a model or like different benchmarks of like kind of post and price points and stuff like that and then that's when I kind of taking in like those different like sponsored opportunities. Wow. And then and then you have to say you've got to obviously mention like this is a sponsored post. And uh, yeah, OK. Yeah, exactly. Right. OK. So it's not like deteriorating and stuff like that. Um, from like my <laughs> Jordan, I Oh, I have, a, I have, a, I do actually have, I've got, I've got a, I've got another question for you. And uh, sure. I guess you've, you've got to shoot off soon, but um. Yeah, yeah. I, what do you know? Like, how clued up are you on esports? Oh, dude, I love esports. Like, since ever since I was a kid, I would go to local like MLG events. Like, cause back then, there esports wasn't that big. It what is just, an like, MLG, MLG event? Was, oh, Major League Gaming. <laughs> 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 that was like that was the thing. I I still love esports. Like till this day, I'm I'm watching Twitch like all the time, and like I follow the teams and all that kind of stuff. Huge fan. Wow. What I love esports. What opportunities would you um do you see in esports in the future? Oh man. I think so esports is still I wouldn't say it's in its early stages anymore, but I totally see a way where it becomes a very reliable like the path to get there will become a lot more clear so like say in elementary school some kids like i want to be an esports gamer he will then be able to go to like a middle school high school like all these kind of things that tailor to being like an esports player like it won't just become like a degenerate thing of like oh like you're just playing video games all day like it'll become like a serious thing just how someone wants to be a basketball player or football player that kind of stuff Okay, so what what's what's quite okay? What what's what's quite interesting for me is, um, and I've asked somebody this already, and I completely fumbled the question. But in terms of, um, you know, we 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 know how competitive car design is, and we know that yeah. um, there's only so many OEMs, but and 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 we've got more graduates or or, or, or institutions churning up uh, designers than ever. But sure. we also have more opportunities, actually. If yeah. you look at the startup land and um, oh yeah and, and gaming yeah, yeah, as well, yeah. so like what yeah. um how like what what opportunities would you see for designers in that respect? I mean, did you could you see um uh, uh how would you envision monetizing an e uh like a, a virtual garage for example of of cars? Mm, mm. Do you do you do you see an opportunity in that? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, especially with things like blockchain where people are able to like tokenize assets, like because you, you, as soon as something becomes quote unquote unique, there's like value to it. There's been, there's been situations where people are tokenizing different kinds of art pieces. They're called NFTs. And it's essentially like you're able to have it be technically unique. So someone could own that particular art piece, even though it's digital since it's on the blockchain, there's only one of that particular art piece. So the same thing could apply to cars where it's like, oh, I own the one of one virtual like car design thing designed by Jordan. And it's been on the blockchain tokenized, like things like that, I think we'll definitely, we'll start seeing very I mean, soon. We're already starting you, to see it. 
could you could you see like um somebody saying like i really want this car designed this digital car designed by somebody and yeah. i'm oh, willing yeah. to pay yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. money for that yes <laughs> yes i can like that that already sounds real <laughs> wow that sounds so real. Like, if you told me that existed, I'd be like, oh, what's the website? I'll, I'll do it right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if, if, if that sort of thing existed, I mean, do you think, do you, do you, do you envision like a game that allows you to bring in your own cars or um, how, like mm. how would you give me a scenario of how, of how that, how you see that playing out? Yeah, I guess. Hmm. I feel like it would just be more so a showcase of collectibles, not like a like game or something like that. Maybe because then the game would have to become. I I just I I see something like that more so being like a just how you go to someone's house and they showcase like oh this is like this painting I got in France like it'll it'll be like more of just like a display piece or a display like a thing digital of some display sort. piece. Yeah. Like how? Like, like a, what is it? Screensaver or what? um or hologram that the actual medium itself i'm not exactly sure what it would be but i think in general the the value of digital assets over physical we're slowly starting to see that transition happen like a girl for prom in the future might rather prefer a digital like set of roses than like an actual like physical one you know like how kind of why I, d I don't get it <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's the same with like Fortnite skins, you know. Like kids love. Yeah, that's what those I'm talking Fortnite about. Skins. Yeah. <laughs> it, there's there's just some kind of like novelty and like uniqueness to it. That's just kind of like, and people spend more time in that world than the physical. So I I I just feel like that's slowly where we're headed. <laughs> it's, Jordan, it's, it's it's very hard to wrap your head around, but uh, yes, dude. I I they I um. I could talk about and talk to you forever. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, and I will, I will talk to you again. But I think, sure. I think we need to, um, yeah, you probably need to do some work, and I, I also yeah. need to to get off. But dude, I, sure. I, this has been absolutely fascinating, mind blowing. Yes. I, you've, you've educated me. You've made me excited <laughs> about the future, and I'm sure you've made a lot of people excited about the future. Um, where yeah. can, uh, okay, before before we say goodbye. It, is there sure. do you have any advice for for kids starting out um i guess just do whatever is like fun like if at the moment it becomes feeling like a job or it like a chore uh, maybe look for something else or just yeah whatever is fun and like you genuinely are passionate about is usually kind of like the right path for things i feel like yeah then just just have fun i guess <laughs> That's great advice. Jordan, where can people yeah. find you? Um, yeah, so like, like we mentioned, um, at Designers Pen is kind of like my um, like social media account that I'm running right now. And at viscom.io is the AI project. And those are kind of like the two main accounts that I'm running on Instagram right now. You can check out there and DM me at any either and I'll respond to them. Jordan, I, you are a very, very, very interesting young man. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, yeah, thanks for I'm sure we'll, we'll speak again soon. Um, and of course. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Awesome. I appreciate the call. <laughs>